got it. Hey guys, it's Gunrunner7271. It's been a while since I've actually done a video. Prepper RN has been uh, cranking out some videos, and you know, we did a video from our RV bug out vehicle last weekend. I promise you that the uh, there's a whole series of videos I have planned on foraging. I'm working on uh, getting those right before I let them go. And uh, you know, in the process of doing these prepper meetups, I met a guy. His name is uh, Photo 6969. And uh, real nice guy. He's a person of color. And one of the few people of color that I see prepping making any type of effort to, to prep. So, um, I've invited prep, uh, I've, I, oof, excuse me, I've invited him to my home, which is rare for someone to actually come to my home, um, and he had some questions over and above what he could talk about at a meetup. And he didn't want to tie up my time in a meetup. So, today, he would like to do an interview with me. And I said, well, let's put it on, let's put it on YouTube. So he's going to ask the questions. And trust me, I don't know what the questions are. Don't really care what the questions are. No question is off limits. Um, I have shown him um, some of our preps. And in saying that, I, I showed him those preps so that he would know that he would have some sort of benchmark or standard, you know, to know that how much you should be prepping for the amount of people that I have and uh, what you should be prepping and to let him know that all the stuff you see on YouTube is not just a put-up job. Some people have PM'd me to think that I was just doing a put-up job. So, <clears throat> Prepper RN and I are very serious about our prepping. I don't think there's a day goes by that we don't at least think about a, proper, a prepping project. So, with that said, I'm going to let him start asking some questions, and I will start answering them, quite candidly if necessary, but trust me um, you know some things need to be said so go ahead man my first question is why are you why are you willing to help me and other people prep well um, I do meetups I can answer that in three steps I do meetups because I like helping people when you help people it's a self-serving thing because that's one less person you have to count on knocking at your door when there is a crisis. Okay? It also helps you establish a network of people that you can count on should you be missing something in your preps to help you gain those items. Okay? I don't get off on the power or anything like that. It's, it's really not like that. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy meeting people. I deal with people every day at my job. I deal with bad people, good people, and ugly people. All kinds of people. Yeah. So, um, the second thing is, you know, being a person of color and mixed ethnicity, I, I tend to judge people for their individuality and, and their and their character, and you wouldn't be here in my you know here on my property if you weren't trustworthy and you know I've gotten to know you over the last six or seven months and we've kind of gotten you've been at a few prepper meetups and we've gotten talking and everything and the more I talked to you the more I knew that you probably weren't as prepared as you should be but you're making every effort within your budget to be prepared. Definitely. Okay? You're not closing your mind and saying, oh, I can't do that. I don't have the money to do that. Or I don't. 
you understand that we're going to be facing some serious times ahead by whatever comes our way. It could be just the weather. That's right? sometimes hard enough. <laughs> Thank you. I keep preaching that, and, and I hope people listen. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch of man-made stuff. It could just be Mother Nature kicking our butts. All the time. <laughs> right, especially here in Ohio. You know, the other reason I'm helping you in particular, you're a person of color. I don't feel, personally, I don't feel people of color work hard enough on prepping. I came from the South. I come from South Western West Virginia, the tri-state area. That's the Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, tri-state area. I grew up playing in coal fields, when I say coal fields, coal mines, slate dumps, hunting deer, fishing out of what little bit of water we had, and, you know, we slaughtered our own hogs, we had cattle, you know, we had chicken coops, you know, I grew up very rural, I was the last kid to be born at home. The one thing I can tell you about rural West Virginia life and growing up and in, in the lifestyle I had, prepping wasn't just a Caucasian or um, European thing. It was everybody prepped because you didn't know when you'd be stuck in the mountains. You know, you just didn't know. Didn't know that. But as I've grown up and, and been throughout the world, I see a lot of in particular urban people of color not prepping my parents are guilty of it they forget where they come from <laughs> they're, they're guilty of it I prep for them I see so many young people that don't prep so many young people of color that would watch the basketball game for hours but wouldn't turn on a dehydrator okay wouldn't bother going spending 90 minutes or an hour and a half or two hours to go can something that's going to maybe save their life and let's face it you know prepping is prepping is like insurance you insure your car and your home and your home if you're a renter you buy renter's insurance yeah. <laughs> you know surely at every job you've had the life insurance is available mm -hmm. If you value taking care of your family, you buy life insurance. Right. Prepping is nothing more than a life insurance policy. Okay? Think of it that way. And for those people out there that think preppers are crazy and they're putting, you know, oh, you're extreme, blah, blah, blah. Listen. <clears throat> I don't have to tell you. Lately, I've been finding a lot more personal religion. And the more I study the Bible and the more I hear things, prepping is biblical. It talks all throughout the Bible about putting stuff back, laying back stuff. Yeah. Okay? And, and it even goes further in 1 Timothy 5.8 to say, you know, he who doesn't take care of his family is less than an unbeliever he is truly an infidel so you know some people can say I take that a little too seriously but really I don't think so um, I'm finding a lot more spirituality as I start to prep the influx of a good woman prepper RN and two kids have significantly impacted me and given me renewed purpose on my prepping before I never prepped above just having stuff for me and I was one of those guys who was gonna bug out and go and be a hermit someplace the world's gonna end if we do that but it's gonna end the world as we know it will be the world the end of the world as we know it I mean that's no fun Mm -hmm. that's no way to go out just because you're the last guy standing doesn't mean you're going to be a happy camper you don't want to be the last guy alone right you know men 
humans are social creatures. They're social animals. We're animals, make no mistake about it. They're social animals. Mm -hmm. And when we can't be social, a part of our humanity goes with that. It really does. So, that's why I prep. That's why I'm teaching you. And certainly you could throw money at this problem. You don't have it, as I understand it, you telling it, you're on a limited budget. And you don't have money to throw at the problem. No, I do not. Okay? So, you can do two things. You can throw what little money you have in the right directions and be smart about your purchases. You've joined a preppers group. Hopefully that preppers group, i.e. Miami Valley Outdoor Preppers, will start doing bulk purchases on necessary things. Okay. It will also start to be more, have more people at those meetings. Spread the word. I uh, tell everybody I know. Okay. You know, there are certainly other prepper groups which you also belong to. You join not one but two prepper groups. Yep. Dogs is a, a great prepper group in the Dayton, Ohio area. And uh, they tend to be a little more, a little more, a little older, but they're more prepared to spend their money wisely. And I'm thinking that comes with a little of their age. Um, their their leader, or the guy that facilitates, I won't say him, he's a leader. He is their facilitator. He lines up the places where they meet. That's what he wants to be known as. Excellent, excellent source of medical knowledge that I couldn't even begin to teach you. You know. Um, People look at my medic bag and they're going, oh, you know, you must know something about it. No. <laughs> I got a buddy that's a physician's assistant that takes care of all that stuff. He's on the team, you know. When I say a team, he's going to be one of those chosen people that are given passage upon the property here, you know. And as you look out, my nearest neighbor is about 400 yards away. Yep. Got a guy across the street, he's about 300 yards away. And we all have a pretty much understanding. They don't bother me. I don't bother them. We're all out here for a reason. It's because we don't want to be in town. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Would you drive five, six miles outside of St. Louis to get here? Yep. Yeah. Just far enough where I can run into town in 15, 20 minutes and go to Ace or Home Depot or wherever I need to go to do my little projects. Right. I like it out here. Got a couple horses in case gas gets to be a problem. I can still get in town. Yeah. You know, they eat pretty cheap. One one thing I've done, you saw how I had my well hooked up. Yep. Um, a lot of planning, smart planning. We got this place for not a lot of money, and uh, it's a fixer upper. You can look around and tell there's some things that need fixed up, but um, we'll get to it. We're in no hurry. We're in it for the long haul. There you go. You're, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. I want to make sure my pantry's completely stocked up. We're going to quadruple the size of the pantry here this winter. That's going to be huge. Well, you got to understand, we're not talking about just four people here. We're talking about 30. That's right. You did say 30 people. That's a lot okay. of people. <laughs> that's, that's, and all of them are going to bring something. But you're talking about 30 people, and that takes a lot of food, a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> you know, water's not an issue. We've got water 515 feet down the road in the canal that you drove oh, over. Yeah. And uh, we got a lake over there, and a lake over there, and a pond in between them. So water, you know. And if anybody's wondering about the bucket filter project, we use the bucket filter going 24 hours a day now. We have a backup bucket filter and plenty of spare filters. But my friend, that everything I've shown you on online is stuff that we use in our everyday life now. And I've got stuff, you saw stuff bucketed up for long term storage, and yep. we keep increasing that. 
A few more trips to LDS Prep Cannery, and we'll be in good shape. We'll be in excellent shape. The stuff that I'm buying now, we split our groceries up into two things. I buy the long-term stuff, she buys the short-term stuff. She takes care of short-term stuff, and cleaning stuff, and, you know, like, he was a little amazed at all the stuff that we have, like dishwashing detergent and paper towels and toothpaste. That sort of, toothpaste and that sort of stuff. She gets all that stuff for practically free. She tells you how she does it. Yeah. It's up to you to go out and do it, but she tells you how to do it. She does, because I wouldn't got that water. <laughs> right. So she she can tell you how to save three or four hundred dollars a month on your grocery bill. Okay. If you've got just 15, 20 minutes a week to cut out some coupons, she'll save you a ton of money. Especially if you like barbecue sauce. Barbecue <clears throat> sauce is good on everything. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Almost everything. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, okay. Next question, man. Why are there so few people of color prepping? Well... Boy, that's that's a that's a tough one. It's not tough for me, but without stepping on toes, um, I think there's a division line, much like there was a division line in the Civil War, the Mason-Dixon line. Yep. When you cross that Mason-Dixon line, a lot of people down south still live in those old ways, black, white, plaid. Everybody. Right. I fish a lot in my boat, and I do tournaments and whatnot, and I'm one of about a handful of people of color that fish tournaments in the state of Ohio here. I don't get bothered by that, don't even get rattled by it. Hmm. Um, but I tell you, you go down south, people down south have people of color down south have boats and campers and RVs and they do all the things that it's not a question of whether you're black or white down there it's a question of it's a lifestyle okay you happen to be living up north and mo a lot of northern people especially people of color have forgotten where they come from They've forgotten that we all originated, for the most part, down south. Oh, yeah. And bless them, they, they, they migrated up to the north for work. You know, that kind of defeats that whole people of color are lazy. They migrated for the work. My grandparents were no different. My great-grandparents were no different. They migrated to where the work was. My mother, father, no different. They migrated to where the work was. So, in in that migration pact, they've forgotten what brought them, what got them that far in life. Canning peaches. Oh God, I remember doing that when I was a kid. You know, canning peaches, thousands of peaches. You know, um, canning peaches every year. My great grandmother would sell canned peaches, jars of canned peaches, honey peaches. Man, it brings back memories. I can almost smell them. I can tell you that there wasn't, they had a refrigerator, but they didn't have indoor plumbing. The water was spring fed, and you had an outhouse. They have a 77 acre tobacco fire. And as a kid, I would hang tobacco in the rafters of the barn. And we didn't have any fancy horses like I got now. We had draft horses, and those draft horses pulled sleds for tobacco See. up and down rolling hills in Virginia Castlewood Virginia okay so people of color that understand that you can't lose that's part of your culture whether you're white or black or whatever when people of color lose that and then they refuse to accept the fact that someday they may have to come back to it. 
I don't know what takes place in their mindset, but they seem to think that somebody out there is going to take care of them. They're refusing to believe that the trucks at Walmart have to come every three days. If the Chinese consulate trucks don't arrive every three days, we're going to starve. Kroger's, you better get a truck every two days or you're going to starve. The milk truck, the dairy truck for Kroger's has to get there about once every 24 hours or they run out. Milk that often. Okay. A bridge goes out over the Mississippi. They have to drive around that bridge several hundred miles or at least 50, 60 miles. Add another day on it. Add another day on it. Okay. What people seem to understand, you get a lot of people of color and they, they're all religious. How I many people of color you know are all religious in church for hours on Sunday? Almost all. Almost all. But are they really listening? Because the last time I read the Bible here recently, it said stuff about laying back food and laying back stuff for hard times. You know, are they really listening? I don't know, man. You tell me. Only to things that I guess it, they feel impact them, not everything. Right. A lot of them are there to to uh, for the fashion show and to be a part of something. But I think they're not being. You know, religion only works if you use what it teaches you. Okay. People of color. I get so tickled when I see them at these prepper, you know, when I see people of color that are preppers. I really do. Because that tells me that they're listening. They get it. They never lost it. You're a young man. How'd you pick up on prepping? I'll turn this around for a minute. How'd you pick up on prepping? Um, I never wanted to have anybody take care of me. And the only way I could figure not have to worry about somebody taking care of me is have extra. That brings us up to a whole different story now, doesn't it? A whole different line of this question. How many people of color do you know that want people to take care of? That's almost all. I only have a very select group of people that I know that don't want to be taken care of by someone else. Right. Right. I refuse to sit back and wait for anybody to hand me anything. Mm -hmm. Teach me to do it, and I'll do it myself next time. That's, a, that's, that's the way we all ought to be thinking, really. Because, you know, having the benefit of having Caucasians in my family, I don't think I can harbor any ill will from slavery. You know, I know how slaves got here. They got here because they were prisoners of war. The Hutus, the Zulus, and the Tutsis right. were killing each other. Or if they didn't kill each other, they found profit out of it. Whoa, 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 we can't kill you. If these other guys over here want to buy you, it's all good. You're not going to die today. Farm, flies. Got one fly, he wants to make a jerk of himself. He wants to be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, he wants to be on YouTube. I don't hold any ill will towards them. They were just doing what any enterprising people would do. Now, some of the conditions were horrible, and we all know that some of the things that happened were horrible. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that was 500 years ago or 400 years ago. Get the hell over it. It ain't going to change what happened, but. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Yeah. And to my friends that fly stars and bars, get the hell over it. You lost. You know? People of color. <clears throat> Sometimes I see them on YouTube or I see them on TV. And I think, boy, they could use a history lesson. My father always taught me one thing. My father was the chief warrant officer in the United States Army, three tours in Vietnam. And he says, son, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. 
if you never want to be a slave again, you'll study history and do things so that it doesn't happen again. So I studied history, aced history, in high school, junior high. I was big on history. And I got to tell you, I think we're all going to be slaves again, but we're going to be economic slaves. And when I say all, whites, blacks, plaid, pinks, yellows, everybody. I think the way the country said it, we're all going to be economic slaves. To who, we don't know yet, but we're all going to be economic slaves. So, when I see people of color and they're not prepping, you know, I feel sorry for them, but I don't, I just can't reach that deep. It's 500 years later, 400 years later after slavery. And, you know, well, not 400 years, but you, you understand what I'm saying. It's a lot of years after slavery. Long it's just a long time. Well, out of, out of there, our lifetime. There are opportunities, okay, to break any type of stereotypical barriers that like, you might face, okay? Why haven't we taken advantage of those opportunities? Mm -hmm. I don't want to keep, you know, when I when I drive by a hatchery, and for those who don't know, a hatchery is a government housing project. Yeah, he gets a chuckle out of that. Most folks do. And, and, and when I drive by a hatchery, and I see healthy young men and healthy young women, whew, healthy young women, really disturbs me. You understand what I'm saying? It disturbs me at a level you just do not understand. And I don't care whether they're black, white, black, you know, yellow, green. When I see healthy people not working and contributing to society on the tax, on their, you know, income and tax, and I know that part of my salary is helping them live every day, Handing them out. <laughs> yeah, and they don't have to get up and go to work in the morning. I get pretty upset about that. That makes two of us. And for me to see a person of color, it's particularly stinging because somewhere along the line, it drags our, the whole gene pool down. You know what I'm saying? It, it aggravates me less than when a, when a Caucasian or an Anglo does it. Because, you know, it's less connected to me that way. Mm -hmm. Me, myself, personally, when I see a so-called brother doing it, God! I'm like, man, you are not doing anything to change the way Anglo-Americans view us or view people of color. And I take it that way. I take it as the way they view you is the way they view me. I don't right. want to be viewed that way. I don't want to be viewed that way. Judge me on my merits. Don't judge me on color of skin or any kind of stereotypical things. I'm a, you know, I'm kind of antisocial, but I'm antisocial because I'm cynical because I work in the public and mm -hmm. I see things. You understand know what I'm saying? I mean, yes. I live in the country because, and I like my neighbors that rifle distance away. I do. Because when I come home at night, I don't want to be bothered with anything but my family, my horses, my 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 family includes my canine kids. Those things, you know, those things that bring you comfort. Because I work in such a uh, questionable environment. So, I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. What can we do more as people of color and just us as preppers to, I guess, educate or bring people more to to this? Boy, I don't know. I really don't. You're grinning. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, that's... You I've, tri I've tried with my own family who are every color of the rainbow from lily white to black is fresh pavement. I just, I, 
I can't that part I can't answer you know white folks have a hard time doing that and when when you have a mentality of people that just don't want to or take things for granted I think that's the biggest thing we're looking at taking things for granted this trucks are going to be rolling no problem man don't worry about it it's not granted the sun will come out tomorrow right or at it least is. you might not see it it is you know you ask those folks in New Orleans what happens when the when the trucks don't get there in the Wally World, or when Wally World's got six feet of water in it. Katrina scared me more than anything else. Well, I learned with Katrina that I can't wait for anybody to come for me. Especially the federal government. Mm-hmm. I don't care who's running the federal government, whether you got a person of color in the White House or not. No, they're not coming. <laughs> they're not coming to your house to save you. <laughs> okay, I'm just telling you. A lot of a lot of. A lot of people of color think just because there's a, a person of color in the White House who's also of mixed ethnicity. You know, let's get one thing straight. He's one person. He couldn't tie his shoes if he didn't have somebody to help him. Got a whole room full of advisors uh -huh. that still have to have somebody Advisor. below them and below them. Yep. There's lots of levels. <laughs> there's lots of levels between you and the president and and quite frankly nothing happens without somebody finally getting their head out of their ass and doing it so let's take a break how long we've been running 31 minutes <laughs> let's take a break we'll get back to interview part two